So yesterday I listened to uh, Far Side Virtual by James Ferraro. It was my first time listening to it. And it is one of my first uh, few albums I've listened to in the vaporwave genre of sorts. And I think Far Side Virtual is really instrumental in bringing about the genre to its most popular um, manifestation of sorts. Um, it really popularized vaporwave to some degree. You know, uh, Other than this, I've listened to Chuck, per Chuck Person's Eco Jams Volume 1. Who, for you, those who are unfamiliar, Chuck Person is um, a pseudonym for of Dana Lopedin, or who you may be more familiar with as 106.never. Uh, and well, he makes lots of diff these different kinds of music in different genres, but one of his um, pieces of music was this thing called Chuck Person's Eco Jams Volume 1, uh, where he really creates this kind of, I guess many describe it as some kind of a vibe, this, uh, as what is Vaporwave? You know, Vaporwave is a kind of kitschy, retro futuristic vibe of sorts it's not necessarily a genre i'd say it's like this contained um vibe um that deal and because the vaporwave is there are many different kinds of vaporwaves if you look online there are like these whole graphs of all the different kinds of vaporwave um but you know i guess so whatever this whatever this is called vapor it's like an internet-based genre of music that incorporates a lot of technology and um pop culture from the past and um integrated into a very musical form that not it's not necessarily structured in a way a pop song is structured it's most likely it is most of the time it isn't but it's um like an electronic it's a variation of electronic music anyway so i listened to chuck person's eco jams and then i've listened to uh, an album by 2814 i think is what it's called and the app the album title is like japanese or something i forgot what it was called but you know i listened to those three and so i listened to james uh, ferraro i know james ferraro is probably one of the most famous um you know, musicians or artists from this um, piece of, um, from this genre of music. And, you know, I, I listened to the album and I have to say, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, but, when, so I listened to the album, I listened to it all the way through. I listened to it on honest, loud speakers. And I was not sure what to make of it. Uh, so I kind of formulated my own opinions. And then afterwards, I went online to read what other people had said. And it seems like a lot of the con conversation with Farside Virtual comes with regards to, I guess, James Chirreau himself and what he said about it and what he um, characterizes or what other have, others have characterized as a kind of uh, criticism of technology, of consumer culture, a criticism of um, this just everything hype. It's like a hyper reality of sorts. He creates a hyper reality that he, where he criticizes the way the capitalist you know, structures have brought us to this very um, passionless and devoid of meaning kind of um, form of music where, where essentially, very fascinatingly, he conceived the album as, as ringtones originally. Uh, so it's very high concept in his construction. But in my listening to the album, uh, I didn't necessarily dwell too much on those aspects of the, of the work. And when I, in my, my personal ta uh, experience of it was that I just thought that it, was, it sounded kind of pleasurable. It sounded kind of... Like musically on its just on its musical sense it felt very nice to listen to i mean it's weird because i i guess many people are more into the speculatory and analytical approach when listening to music for me i like listening to music for the very first time when i listen to something for the very first time i like it to become a, i like it to be a sensory experience it's about sensory experience it's not about me um, trying to wrap my brain around a concept or me trying to understand it it's about experiencing it as opposed to understanding it it's like a, i think it's a it's like a spectrum of sorts that i don't think can be done at the same time and you need perhaps you can listen to something once to enjoy the sensory experience of it and then understanding after but i can't do that do it at the same time and i don't believe that it is possible really so most people i think they don't necessarily they kind of inhibit the sensory mode and just put on the critical lens and it becomes um i guess for me it, i think it's less um less enjoyable thing um so i listened to music and i thought it sounded kind of pleasure musically um interesting and pleasurable anyway it uses a lot of when they talk about retro futures it uses a lot of video game sounds like you know the imagine those sounds of like menu screens and you're going going through menu screens in video games or like you know like i was mentioning earlier the, it, some of it actually sounds like they, he got ringtone some things or the windows 95 screen opening when you open the screen of windows 95 that kind of windows hum of sorts that opens it up and just computer sounds and just the opening of, you know, a lot of it is something that it's very uh, much uh, a product of today, a product of this moment in history. When you think of history, 
just going back thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of years, when you listen to the far side virtual, it's very much contained within its time in, in a way that it, because of how it ties itself to the technology, although you can argue it's like not necessarily t- present technology, it's kind of like a, again, retro futurism, it's like a 80s, 90s technology, um, and maybe there has to be something, there's something to be said about him, you know, taking apart 90s technology into a 2010s work. Um, but in the grander scheme of things, it is very much tied into this upper period of like millennial culture in which you can't really have made this kind of music back in the 70s, for example, because those sounds just didn't exist. You know, these are sounds that just came to existence uh, in the recent past. And it was it's, it's like an amalgamation of those sounds into like a musical format. That's, and through that musical format, it's very light hearted and easy to listen to. And uh, that's kind of what I took out of it. You know, I didn't really think of it as like looking at the, the you know the meaninglessness of consumerist culture and how uh, I read something about you know util- it's like a, it's like a form of utilitarianism and um sh- uh, is exposing how the future of you know consumption will look towards like maybe that was the intention I don't know but in my experience of the music I thought it was kind of like easy listening and what it reminded me of what it reminded me I think that things, you can argue I read people argue that the, the fact that it's easy to listen to and pleasurable to the ears perhaps is like a part of the ironic nature of the piece of work which I can like I'm not gonna pretend like I don't notice this irony in using a lot of this stuff for music but I find it just on its again when it's very sense it sounds very musical and very um good nice to listen to I and mean, it reminds me of Muzak. In Muzak, not in the sense of it being a bad thing. I think many people think of Muzak as like a derogatory tor- term for denigrating, you know, uh, music that is meant to be not challenging. Um, but musically, it sounds like Muzak, and it sounds like there's this um, genre of music called Exotica from the 50s that I, I listened to an album a couple of months ago. It's called um, Exotica by this guy named, uh, what is his name? Martin Denny, I think. Uh, it came out in fifty seven or something, and it was a what happened in Exotica that album. It created a whole genre called Exotica, actually, and it it was this thing where they would combine sounds, just um things you would hear in east in Eastern culture. You know, I don't want to. It's uh, you can argue it's like an exoticization of Eastern culture, whatever Eastern even means, but like exoticization of Asian cultures, where the idea was this guy went to some part in Asia or something, or perhaps it was Hawaii. I'm not sure, and. He was, and it sounds, it sounds like a collection of sounds, and the collections of sounds are used to be, are thrown together into this very musical la- soundscape. And the soundscape um, overlies uh, the very easy listening kind of melodies underneath it. Um, but again, the background music, it sounds like you're in a, it doesn't even sound like you're in Asia or anything. It sounds like you are in uh, a show, like a, those exotica shows. And I guess that's where it comes from, you know. And I so I listened to this album a couple of months ago, and this is what it most reminded me of. This is what Far Side Virtual most reminded me of. It reminded me of Exotica, because it appropriates uh, sounds not necessarily meant for separate uh, listening, um, and puts it into this piece of art that kind of works. Uh, so you know maybe it's about like consumerist culture, I and mean, I can, I get I can understand those sides of it. But on its own, on itself, on its musical aspects, I think it's very musically um, engaging. And it reminds me of things like uh, there's there's some elements of different genres. It's like a menagerie of genres, like plucked together and just thrown in. You can hear like bits of jazz, bits of you know uh, experimental electronica, but a little bit of avant garde music. And it's all kind of just thrown together in a way that is not really recognizable as one specific genre, but it just kind of it's like a um, it's like a it's like a painting of sorts. Like it's um, it reminds me of. Uh, the music of. Like to a certain, to a lesser degree, it reminds me of the music of, uh, the avalanches. But not not necessarily. It's, that's a, I think that's a big compliment because I think the avalanches are one of the greatest polyphonic musical groups. But, the way that the the. Um, you know, it's like sampling. It's like sampling sounds from a society and then creating music out of it, and that and. While the Avalanche did it with actually actual music, uh, I think I commend James Ferrer for this. I think it's a very fascinating album. It's not something I'll probably listen to a lot of times, but uh, it, for what it was, for the experience it was, I really enjoyed it. And, you know, um, it feels like something that is very important to collect, I think. Uh, Vaporwave in general, I don't know how much I think about it because I haven't listened to a lot of Vaporwave, but 2814 was kind of chill listening as well. So yeah, that's what I thought about this.